hello and welcome to my channel welcome back to my channel i am so excited because i have really grown in subscribers this week one of my videos that i did on my channel about a year ago is getting some attention now and praise god i am really glad that it is it's actually charles lawson and he is preaching a message and so if you are one of my new subscribers, then welcome. I am so glad that you get to be a part of what God is doing for me and my ministry. Here lately on my channel, I am talking about Matthew 24. We actually are stuck on verse 3, and I put an A there on the end of it because we are going to get into the second part of that possibly next week. But right now, we're talking about the fallen state of the church. The rabbit holes and the research that I have done over the last few weeks so that I could put these videos together for you was so crazy. But I ended up finding out that Kenneth Copeland not only sang back in the 40s, and he did such an amazing job. I'm not going to lie. I love you so, I can't let you go. I must make you see, you mean more to me than each beat of my heart. For I can't live without your sounds very similar to Elvis Presley. There's no point in lying about it. Facts don't stop where your feelings begin. Period. <laughs> but in researching that, I found out that Kenneth Copeland actually plays in movies. But not the kind that you might think that it was. Sure, he has some directed straight toward his ministry. I'm talking about legitimate movies. At first, I was incredibly confused. I thought that maybe someone had photoshopped Kenneth Copeland's head on this person and that wasn't really Kenneth Copeland. But it actually is. So I have decided to take all of the clips that I could find on YouTube, make a collaboration out of it, and I'm going to watch this with you. And I've seen a little bit of it, but you're going to get my reaction to this. And you can just hang out and watch it with me. Let's go ahead and watch it and see Kenneth Copeland playing and some movies, guys. I'm serious. Okay, so we might as well go ahead and get comfortable because I'm thinking it's about 12 minutes. It's going to be a good 12 minutes. So let's get started. There is something that I must do. I should have done 20 years ago. What some of the things you're doing are we are dealing with the devil himself. Santiago Sark. The winds are changing. We need to be watchful. I am Antonio Sark. I am your grandfather. I feel like I'm losing it here. I don't this care. You don't crazy. do that to me. You don't do that to anybody. I don't ever want to see you again. If April is not to be I never want to see you again. No, go away. Oh my Let gosh, go. that really I'm is me. Everything that... clean. We're going to begin to go out to the streets and uh, find anyone that will listen to us. It's just a There's a change coming to this town. Well, if you try to mess the way I do business around here, I will not hesitate to silence you. You hear me? I will take you out. We want to do a rally right here in your city. That's exactly what we've needed here. He is coming so soon, sooner than any of us. You know where I can find Rick Reyna? Yeah, I think I saw so him backstage. Soon. 
If you want God to make a difference oh in your life, I want you to raise your hands towards heaven. Because I believe today is your day. It's too late for you. And there is no power on this earth like the power of the love of God. Your God can stop it. Oh, wow. So that one was crazy because that, what relevance did that have to anything? This man is a well-known pastor. I mean, sure, we know a lot of things about him. Didn't know he was in movies at all, apparently. So that seems to me like he is maybe seeking attention or something because it you hear a little bit about Jesus, but oh my goodness, did you see how that guy got shot in the head? What relevance does that have? So let's go ahead and see this next one. It's called Super Kids. Commander Kim. This is a dangerous mission, but I knew my covenant brother would come. Well, our God is more than enough. That is hilarious. Star Trek or something. Oh my goodness. Yeah, let's get it done. Oh, oh my So I guess this is one of those, like, please come search for one of those that you're not supposed to go to. I need your strength, Lord Jesus. Cover me with your armor of light. Jesus is like a genie. Apparently, you can just call on him and he does it. Rise and shine, for the light has come. The glory of God rises upon you. One of the clips on YouTube refers to this clip as Kenneth Copeland is leather down. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over you, you spirit of darkness. Mm -hmm. We're running across the stage. I guess he's got superpowers. Oh my gosh, everything was so interesting. <gasps> the delay. The question is, Dark Master, are you prepared to meet my God? I love you, little brother. Just as I will always love you, yes, no matter what you may do, God will always love you too. Forgive me my sins, Lord Jesus. Come and be oh, my king. What fails? It's done. <laughs> it's done. What's done, it's Kenneth? Done. What's done? Is the super kid dead? Uh-uh. He had like a patch or something on his arm. Is he blind? No, you didn't. That is to signify because when he received his side and a super kid just gave Kenneth Copeland's brother his side. And now they're singing together. What is this? How do people not know? Leather Daddy again, I guess. Oh my gosh. I bind you, Satan. In the name of Jesus. Be gone. Get out of my way. 
else. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. He is a creature man. He happens to be a billionaire. From the tiles he gets from his church. He's like some super prophet, powerful. What does that signify? And the guy's scared. Look how terrified. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. Get on your knees, he said, in the presence of a prophet of God. Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about that. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who heed the words of this book. Worship God. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. So let's continue. I receive you, Lord Jesus. I receive you. Oh, so now he's looking Come down into the sinner's prayer. Come into my heart. Everybody can just get saved because Kenneth Copeland says. Oh gosh, now he's in a western. He is so full of himself. The gunslinger. The story of Wichita Slim, whose outlaw ways Wichita ended when he met Jesus, and who now faces the biggest fight of his life. You're a gunslinger, and you're the best there is. Well, you're going to have to fill me in on everything. My memory is gone. The Old West, it wasn't won by a six-gun. It was won with the power of prayer. <laughs> with the power of prayer. Wichita Slim's deliverance. I'm no outlaw. I'm a United States Marshal. The Gunslinger, a frontier adventure in faith with the whole family. actually serious what he did this. This is so fun. Has nothing to do with God. It's all about him. In the tradition of the classic Western, with the Wichita power of God's covenant that. promise, Wichita Slim rides again. In the power of him. In their new adventure, Kenneth Copeland and Willie George share heart-pounding action. I won't hurt you, boy. As a young boy is torn from his mother's arms. And here he comes I to save the day. We'll bring your boy back alive. Can the force of evil stand in the face of God's covenant promise? Find out in a story as old as the West and as new as eternity. Okay, number one, what does that, any of that, have to do with God's covenant promise? But number two, it's as old as the West and as new as eternity. Why do people not know about this? Is he trying to keep it a secret? I can't seem to find much about it anywhere. I would love to watch these. And I might even do a video about it. That would be so cool. Let's go to the next one. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were, by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. He likes that Italian part, like he's the Godfather. Wherewith he loves, if when we were dead in sin, have made us alive together with Christ, by grace yeah. you are saved. He's got a mustache. It helps him to get in the kingdom. Miguelito, it's me. I need you. 
to come to the house. Come quickly, please. My whole life has been this family. We work hard. Her name has respect. We say people do. I'm going away. You know I'm leaving this kind of life and I've got to go now. What I want is all pass away. Controlling people. That's not who I am anymore. A change is coming. Are you joking me? Are you seriously joking me? Kenneth Max Copeland. It looks to me like the change you're talking about is snorting coke and dealing drugs. You broke all ten commandments and also the two new ones in less than three minutes. Shame on you, and you call yourself a preacher man. I know that's what it is. I don't do it, but I know that's what it is. These are drug deals and things going on in Kenneth Copeland's movie. What does this have to do with the gospel? There's something over this big dark cloud hanging over the people. You know, eventually that, that darkness, it consumes them. It, it wraps them up. That's why this rally is so important. Growing up, everybody told me that I would not amount to anything. But you know what? One day, I heard God tell me something different. Did you? And that's when I began to see the things in a different way. Well, we've got to show them something different. Yeah, I need you to do something for me. I need you to pull the trigger on someone. And doing something like this. And calling yourself a preacher. Take the shot. Deceiving the masses hard. with your status and that. My father! You gave me your son! Wow, my father, you gave me your son. I gave you mine! And now I give you mine, he says. Wow. This really reminds me of one of the posts that I used last week on my video that I found on Quora as someone who was once a priest or pastor. Why did you leave the church? He says, no great scandal or crisis of faith. Just an honest evaluation of my motivations. I was at various times an assistant pastor, youth pastor, associate pastor, and an intern pastor. After I helped the church locate a permanent pastor, I never took or even sought another pastorate. I didn't want to be named as a permanent pastor. I had a fine secular job that I loved and it paid me well. I did not consider myself qualified for the pastorate. I took the ministry very seriously. Anyone who considers himself as speaking for God better. But I also realized that I loved the attention I got from preaching. Eventually, I came to realize that I was doing it for the attention. And God's people deserved better. You gotta love it. Pure honesty, and it's the truth. Kenneth Copeland is just seeking attention here. It has nothing to do with... With God, it has everything to do with him. He's the one that had the powers to save in the videos. He's the one who had the power to heal, to do all those magical things. It was all about Kenneth, and it was just not about God. I hope you had fun sticking around with me today. I just wanted to show you this because it was so crazy. I had no idea. All I was looking for was about him singing one of his beautiful songs. But in these last few videos that I've done, we have been testing spirits. I've been telling you about how Jesus left the church beginning of Matthew 23. 
People will say that if you leave the church due to people, that you have your eyes on people, not on God. Again, I have to say, if Jesus left the church due to the amount of idolatry, heresy, and how they were just not serving God, the Father, His Father, and He knew who that was and how to identify Him, He left because He had to. But He loved them so much, it's not like it was a rash decision. The disciples thought that maybe He was making a rash decision. No, it wasn't a rash decision. It was a decision made based solely on the fact that if he stayed, he would be participating in their idolatry with them. It makes me think of the story in Exodus where Moses goes up onto the mount to talk to God for 40 days. And while he is up there, his brother Aaron He's already got his trinkets and things that was given to him. Everybody knows what a good godly man he is. He was Moses' voice. Remember, Moses said, I had uncircumcised lips. But when Moses came down from off of the mountain, he saw that his brother Aaron and the children of Israel couldn't even take being away for 40 days from someone who could help give them direction because now they have built a golden calf with all of their golden trinkets and things. Aaron helped to fashion it. This is the voice of Moses, Aaron's brother, who is supposed to be helping lead the children of Israel to the land of milk and honey. While Moses is up on the hill and then all of the sudden he just busts them. I'm telling you what, the Bible is so full of so many good stories. It is just going to blow your mind. <laughs> but if you don't read all of Exodus, you can't honestly understand the gravity of what had happened. When I was studying the Bible and I came up on this verse, my husband was working nearby at a job, and I lie to you not, I drove across town so I could tell him about what happened. The Bible is so full of so many good stories. The book of Exodus, so much drama. The book of Revelation, so much fantasy. The book of Solomon, and also, in many of the books, so much love and love stories. So much action. It's not a bad thing to be a Christian. It's not... The things of this world can make you happy. But they can't give you joy. Only the Lord Jesus can do that. The things on this earth are temporary. And it's up to us to know what Jesus we serve. Because remember, we live in an age where Jesus Christ is the false Christ spoken of in Matthew 24 and also in Galatians. Know what Jesus you serve today. Because if you serve the same God that Kenneth Copeland does, I wouldn't give you a dime for your salvation. That man thinks he's a God. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land, it outshines that sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? 
Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, please take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, please take him too. While he's calling you. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. Thank you so much for sticking around and being a part of what God is doing in my ministry. I hope that somebody out there grows for God today, and I hope that you have a beautiful and blessed day. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. <laughs>